Hmm, get a tragic here and welcome back to Arkham Horror. This is it. Okay, so the gates have opened. We've got five gates on the board. We had an incredibly upsetting last round. Five gates is final battle time. And I got so despondent, I basically just turned the computer off. <laughs> but I'm back after much soul searching and annoyance. Now, what's interesting is that I very rarely play the final battles when I play myself. I usually just stop playing when the gates close. But because I'm playing online for other people, I'm going to do the final battle. A lot of people play the final battle. I just think it's uh, the final battle is thematically awesome, but incredibly finicky. What happens is when you reach an end game point, like for example, having five gates open, which we were so close, we got everything right. We got right down to the point where we only had to roll one success, right? So that's a two thirds chance out of four rolls. So we actually did, we actually did work. We beat the odds to fail our four rolls, but uh, whatever. I mean, I was so sure we were going to get past that. Oh, I'm still pissed off about it. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> so what you do, you discard the rumors and the environments. And of course, the, the, the headline card, I just leave there for fun. You don't actually keep that up, up anyway. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to do the, the battle variant. Okay. Now, this is, the, uh, this is a variant that was introduced, I think, in Kingsport. And it's basically just uh, a more advanced version of the final battle. It doesn't make it any less finicky. In fact, it makes it more finicky, but it's, it is more fun in my opinion. Okay, so I'm just gonna save a camera angle here so I can jump up here. Now, the way the final battle works when you're using these cards is that you have an upkeep phase, then you draw a card and the card will direct you what to do. So example, say you start with the greens and it gets worse. And there's all these special monster specific ones that some of these cards will call on. They'll say, draw this, draw a, a plot card. I think this is called a plot card. Anyway, the point is red is really bad. There's actually a card in this deck that instantly ends the game. And these are also really bad. Green is, they're all bad, right? But so, so this, I, if I draw this one, comes up, you resolve it in order. So this one would be resolved as investigators attack. Then you do the dangerous plan is either active for the whole time or sometimes it's an event that happens after the attack, whatever. The point is you do the top and then the bottom. Sometimes the H1 attack first. Sometimes it'll tell you to draw more cards, etc., etc. And that is pretty much it. So for example, this one is dangerous plan. Each investigator does not score at least one success in his combat check. This round is devoured. Pretty harsh. Lucky I drew that as the uh, the demo. <laughs> Shuffle again. Yes, that's totally legal. Now, what you do, you fill up the Doom Drack completely. So we have to clear 10 Doom tokens to close this. It's very, very hard. Now, the way this works is to clear a Doom token, you need to get successes equal to the player count. So in our particular case, we have eight players so per, we need eight successes per Doom token to get rid of one Doom token. Now, the good thing is that successes are, are, are accumulative, okay? So say she rolls two successes, she rolls one success, and she rolls one success, he rolls one success. That means we've actually commu communally created four successes, okay? And that's the way it works. And it actually carries on between rounds even, okay? The bad side of like, say we're up to seven successes here, and then this guy rolls 10 successes. As soon as you hit eight, you discard the rest, okay? So that's the way successes work. So we need to get eight successes for each of these Doom tokens. And at the end of every player round, right? We have the, you know, okay, well that one, doesn't have an attack. This one doesn't have an attack. You know, you then have the ancient one attacks. Okay. Now the way the ancient one attacks is written here. And in this particular case, you just draw a token. And if we ever try and draw a token and we can't, 
then we're all devoured. Okay, so what that means is we have six rounds to clear all these tokens. So this is pretty impossible. Now we do have an upkeep phase. There is a number of cards and you know relationship things that we will have to discard. Uh, now we do have an upkeep phase. Now sometimes uh, these you know heralds and guardians and all this kind of stuff will have something in the upkeep phase that you can actually do. For example, this guy has an upkeep ability, but it's completely irrelevant to us. Now, uh, so none of these have anything that's happening in the upkeep phase, so we can ignore all three of these things. So we're just doing Shovel Mel over here. Uh, what else of interest? Uh, we didn't draw, we forgot to draw a relationship card for Kate. And that's pretty much it. So now it is currently Leo's turn. So let's move that up and we get started. Okay, so the way it works is we have one upkeep phase, then we draw a card and then we follow the cards text. And that may include an attack phase for both uh, monster and us. Now in the upkeep phase, we are allowed to trade, okay? So the way you kind of want to do this normally is that whoever's got the highest chance of getting successes, you trade them all the stuff and you keep bouncing around. This is why it can be very, very fiddly because you basically have to do a mass trade every turn to maximize who gets what. And also, oh, you'll see, you'll see it can be a bit of a pain. So I'm just gonna off camera go through the board and get rid of any cards some cards like say this one that we just drew, if the ancient one has awakened, this card may not be used, right? So we just get rid of that card, okay? So there's gonna be a number of cards that we can't use. Uh, we don't have to roll for bank loans and retainers. We still roll for blessings, you know, but pretty much everything else is completely irrelevant. So I'm just gonna go through, like we don't need the motorcycle, movement doesn't matter. So we're going to go through and I'm going to, going to figure out what cards we don't have and then I'm going to do a uh, a little trade. Okay, so these are the cards that we don't need. We didn't actually have many cards that we can't use. So these three cards have no use and these two cards, uh, this card has no use and this card has no use. So I'm just going to get rid of these and it's just going to uh, allow me to easier, be, make it easier to go through all my stuff. What I did notice is a couple of things. One, I forgot to draw her unique item. So let's draw that and hope for something awesome. That does not help us at all. So we'll just get rid of that straight away. Just stops monster surges. It would have been very, very good if we didn't lose the game, but whatever. Also, uh, this girl has, if Lily is knocked unconscious or driven insane, Oh, wait, she was driven insane. I can't do it in play. Oops, that was a big mistake. That should have been out ages ago. Maximum sanity is reduced by one. Wow, that should have been done ages ago. So let's make her sanity reduced again. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so she was driven insane. But, uh, about turn three or something, so she had uh, she had an ability that actually a what that activated if the ancient one awakened, which we don't get because we did have a go at saying okay, so that's the end of that. How annoying! Okay, now for trading. Basically, what we want to do is maximize who's got what abilities. Okay. So for starters, everyone needs to max out their fight. There is no horror checks here, but we do have magical resistance and physical resistance to deal with, and we have a negative three modifier. So it's pretty harsh. That means this is physical weapon of seven, but it actually becomes three because it's halved and rounded down. So that is actually only plus three. So tapping that, will negate the, the uh, whatever it's called. You know what I'm trying to say. 
blah, 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 modifier. So tapping this will negate the modifier. So this guy here, he currently has no weapons at any time, right? He does have two focus because he's got the ruby, okay? Over here, we have a wither, which is plus three to combat checks. This is actually only plus one because it's three minus uh, three divided by two, right? Rounded down. So that's only a plus one for all the the rolling and stuff we have to do to get to do this every turn. It's only plus one. Okay. We do have this, which is quite cool. This allows us to uh, sacrifice sanity for you know sa uh, stamina, which might be very helpful at some point. She can actually regen. So I might even send this to another person. That's an upkeep spell. So we get to use that. Over here, we have one of probably our, one of our best. She is blessed. So we actually have one, two, three blessed characters. And she's probably going to stay blessed because she can tap, right? She has a low fight. She's got a high sounding. She's got five points left. And she's got this which is plus three attack this is plus one so she's plus four if they both go through this is a movement spell so that does not work you might get rid of that she also has a plus will here and she has fisty cast she does not have two clue tokens though so whatever that doesn't work this guy he has five combat and he's got two really good weapons both giving plus three so these will both negate the uh you know the modifier of negative three now because it's physical and resistance it doesn't matter he doesn't it doesn't matter which one he has so he don't he doesn't need both of them so we can get rid of one meanwhile we have kate kate has a four fight but she's all the, way, all the way down here at one focus, so she's kind of screwed. She does have Fist of Yog, which can be very, very, very good, especially if we give that to the person who's blessed. And we also have uh, Premonition, which we will use turn one to give her a bit more of a, uh, a boost to her, whatever it's called, focus. This guy, he has got a rifle, Okay, so that is five. That's uh, two points of damage. And this is an interesting one. This is a physical weapon. She's got magical resistance, so it's plus three, which means because he's also got physical resistance, it's actually plus one. And this is plus two. So if he taps both of these, he negates the, the modifier, okay? So that negates the modifier, that negates the modifier. This negates the modifier. We'll give this, this negates the modifier. So, okay, we're getting closer. Now we also have this thing, which is plus to spell and plus to spell. So we're gonna give this to our blessed girly. And this is the question, which is better? So this person here has plus law. So she's actually got six law, right? So she will be rolling. If we gave her this and we gave her the Yog spell, which is, oh, she's actually got it, right? She would have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for Yog to roll four successes but she's not blessed. So I actually think even though she doesn't have that plus law, we're gonna give it to this girl here. Now Yog is a one handed spell. So we're gonna put it over here, but she's got this thing here, which we're gonna be using. This gives her a magical we weapon plus two combats. So that's one combat, okay? So, kablamo, kablamo. We're gonna cast that each turn. That frees up these two spells. We'll give them to you. She also has this thing for one combat. It's a real shame we can't put it over here. And what's going up here? She has wither, that's plus one. So 
I'm going to give her shriveling, take her wither, and then I've got this thing I'm not going to be able to use. And that is pretty much the situation we're in. Not great. Okay, so I've done all the trading. Let's get straight into this. We're starting with Ashcan Pete. We've d and he's going to do. Oh, you know what else we're going to do? Uh, okay, so Ashcan is also going to give the ruby to the sister, like that. The ruby allows her to get plus one focus. So I'm going to do all the focusing now. We're just going to pump up our fight. So that's one, two, three. He's got three, so that's one, two. He's got two, so that's one, two. He's only got one now, so it's only one. And I don't know what that clue is doing here. I'm going to get rid of this money because we don't need it. Okay, so she is going to go one to get to five fight. And then she's going to go bam like this. That gives her plus one sanity, plus one sanity, minus one health minus one health. Uh, that doesn't move. Okay, so that's that. She has to roll for her blessing. And she's also going to go one, two, using plus one focus and the focus there. He is going to not bother changing anything and he's going to roll his blessing anything but a one is all i want just no ones just don't give me a one please that's all i'm asking oh you give me a break just give me a break she is going to first cast premonition which is a minus one sanity yonk and that is cast an exhaust to move one skill slider up two spots okay so we're going to use a focus to go up one to start with and then she has five law plus one law is six. There is a minus one modifier, so that's five. Yeah, blam, that's a pass. So we get another two slots, one, two, she's at four. And I don't think we need to use that again, basically. This guy is right, this guy is right. This guy is needs to roll for his thing. No ones. Okay, upkeep. After making a combat check, exhaust to add one success to the result. So this is always going to give us a success because we're never going to spend his uh, focus again so he can use this every turn. But here we are. Oh, no, no, this, sorry, some of these weapons, some of these uh, Dunwich weapons and Kingsport weapons, you need focus to untap, but not this one. If you're wondering why I'm tapping them like this, in this mod, if you tap it like that, it automatically untaps. If you tap it like that, it won't untap. Okay, so we've done all our focusing. Now it's time to get started. So let's draw the first card. Yablamo. Battle condition. Never before have I been so perfectly focused and clear. I took in the whole scene in horrific detail. Time stands still. Keep this card in play for the rest of the game. Investigators receive a plus one to all skill checks except combat. Okay. Each time an investigator is devoured, all remaining investigators lose their choice of either one sanity or one stamina. This loss cannot be reduced by any items or abilities. Immediately withdraw and resolve another card. Okay, so I'll just put this over here. That's like a permanent. Ancient One attacks. We brace ourselves. There was no telling what the creature would do next. Draw a card from the Ancient One's plot deck and immediately resolve it as though it was a battle card this round. Okay, so that's a great start. Investigators attack. I cursed as I felt the enormous beast recede from us until it made a move. We were virtually helpless, diving deep. The investigators attack as normal, but Shovel Mel gains physical immunity until the end of the round. Uh, okay, so now she has physical immunity instead of resistance. 
Okay, Ancient One attacks. After we had wasted our shots and explosives, I could feel the great worm surging up to devour us. Shuttle Mel attacks as normal. Okay, so I've kind of reset the board a little bit back to the beginning of the save game where I started, and that's because when I played through, I completely screwed up something and I need to basically restart. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I've, I've, I've organized, I've got the same plot cards out that we drew and I'm just going to reshuffle the, uh, redo what's going on here. Basically I was, as I was playing, I made a couple of big mistakes and I kept forgetting about modifiers like this and I tried to go through the edit and try and make it, you know, but there was, it was just a mess of, like I said, I very rarely play the ancient one awakens rules. So I'm not very experienced with it. And I just made a huge mess of it. So what I'm going to do, I've done all the setup. Uh, so I will, I've done all the setup. So I'm going to go through and redo all this stuff now. Right. So it all makes more sense in the next video and just do basically treat it like a new game. So I do the setup and then I'm going to do the round of comp, couple of rounds of combat a turn. Uh, basically that's about that. So you'll see that the, I'll, I'll record the next video straight away. I'll probably upload them both at one go, but I just want to split them. So they're not like, you know, cause I did the next four rounds of combat, got almost all of it wrong, and the video was like an hour, 20 minutes. I mean, it's probably like 20 minutes just for the intro. So, yeah, redoing it. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys next time for the final showdown. And hopefully, we can pull this out of the bag. Not likely, but we're going to give it a go. See you guys next time. Okay, I've just redone the trading. We're ready to go for next time. Oh yeah.